After Half-Life 2's announcement in May of 2003 at E3, the community went nuts that they had confirmation that a game that had made great waves in the gaming industry was getting a sequel. From over-eager fans attempting to get as much information as they could from the developers, Valve missing its release date of September, and finally, someone actually hacking into the Valve server in October, where they stole the Half-Life 2 source code, it's quite easy to say that the development of Half-Life 2 was chaotic. Anyway, on a more positive note, in June of 2004, Valve wanted to give back to the community, and so, they created an alternate reality game that brought Half-Life fans together to solve it, where they were rewarded with information about Half-Life 2, which eventually released in November 2004. In this video, we'll explore each phase of the test and how the community worked together to discover and solve the Half-Life 2 ARG. On June 23rd, 2004, the Half-Life 2 alternate reality game began with the first test, and it took the most dedicated fans in the community to even discover it was a test. This ARG began in the form of a forum post on the fan community website, Half-Life2.net. As of 2012, it was renamed to Valve Time. In the forum, a user by the name of Merck posted on a thread titled, Back from another trip to Valve. Hey everyone, I recently got back from, you are all going to hate me for this, another trip to Valve. Yep, I was lucky enough to be able to go there and playtest Half-Life 2 for about an hour and a half. I am not going to tell anything about the parts that I played however, as it was the end of the game. The game is so dang awesome and they are pretty much complete. It was sweet. I was escorted into a room with this big widescreen monitor and clip surround sound speakers and I played Half-Life 2 while around 5 or 6 Valve employees watched me play and took notes. Afterwards they asked me questions such as did I like it and what parts I didn't like and how hard I thought it was etc etc. Well it was extremely fun and I ended up giving them that Half-Life 2 crowbar that I had as a thanks for them letting me do all this. I may just be making some more trips to Valve for some more playtesting and whatnot in the next few weeks also. And oh yeah guys, you are going to love this. You know this pictures I deleted. Well, while I was there, I went back into that room with the writing on the wall and took pictures of the board again. You guys persuaded me into letting you see as I know you all have been waiting for some really good information. Here is one picture, and some of the writing got cut off due to my stupidity of not getting the whole whiteboard in the picture. I don't know what you guys make of this, but some of the stuff looks really interesting. Also, the link on the upper left said screenshot archive, so I don't know what this is all about as I haven't even tried going to it yet. Merck Just quickly, a little backstory on Merck. They had posted on the forum a week before asking the community of Half-Life2.net about how they would be able to get a tour of the Valve offices. In response, the community suggested that they send an email to Gabe Newell, which was successful and Merck was given a slot for the next week. In excitement, they posted how happy they were with the community and even shared an image of a crowbar they had found in their yard and painted, which is the crowbar they mentioned in their post after visiting Valve. Straight away, the users of the forum overlooked their jealousy of Merck and began speculating on what the items on the whiteboard meant. Of course, there were some that did not believe the post to be real, commenting that the board looked too staged. But for those who believed Merck, they dived in and went through each part of the whiteboard systematically to learn what they could. Looking back, we know what a lot of this means. Moss, Eli's Leg, Dark Energy, Razor Train, Nova Prospect, and so on. There are also some points on the board that I believe are intended to be a joke. A Gordon and Alex love scene and hairstyles for Barney, but back then, this would have been an overload of information for the fans that had been starved for information, and so, they took what they were given and began to speculate. Merck later went on to comment that they had originally visited Valve the day before and met with Gabe Newell, who offered the possibility of playtesting the next day if they returned, in which Merck did and later took a picture of the whiteboard. Although there were many who still believed the photo and Merck story to be false, Jess Cliff, the co-creator of Counter-Strike, came onto the forum where he confirmed that Merck had visited Valve and playtested the game. 
considering Cliff, a member of Valve, had not called out Merck for taking a photograph of seemingly secret information. It confirmed that there was something more to this whiteboard, and already, many had taken to the image to find a deeper meaning. On the same day, the user Lanthanide discovered that this was in fact a test and posted a URL to the next stage of the test on the 88th message of this thread. But how did they get to this? On the last line of Merck's message, they stated, also the link on the upper left says screenshot archive, so I don't know what this is all about as I haven't tried going to it yet. So, looking at the top left of the photo, we can see what appears to be a random arrangement of letters and symbols. Just to the right of it, we see ROT13. Now, what is ROT13? After a quick Google search, we can see that this is a simple cipher that replaces a letter with the 13th letter after it in the alphabet. For example, if we look at the word Gordon, Encrypting it with ROT turns the name of our favourite scientist into this. Anyway, back to the top left of the whiteboard that Merck pointed out. When reversing 13 letters of what is shown, this string of random characters turns into this. Anyone that has used the internet will know that this looks very similar to a website address, and with the photo having cut off a chunk of the whiteboard, it makes sense that the word half would have been missing from this image. So. After figuring all of this out, Lanthanide posted their findings to the forum. Okay, decrypted that URL, life2.co2 forward slash secret forward slash pwned. Presumably, it's halflife2.com forward slash secret forward slash pwned. Before we move on, there was also another string of characters to decode here, where this decoded to Hello Tour Visitors, which suggests that those on the tour of the Valve facility were basically expected to discover and take a picture of the whiteboard. Although not a part of the test, I am guessing that Valve assumed the visitors would decode this message first and then apply ROT13 to the other parts of the whiteboard. Moving on, when visiting the URL Lanthanide had discovered, it took the users to Planet Half-Life, which, back then, was a website owned by GameSpy, who updated the page with news about the Half-Life series as it came out. This confused those who arrived here as it did not seem to add anything to the test. After a few attempts, another user, Dedatorv, discovered that they simply needed to add a dash between Half and Life in the URL, which was the correct spelling of the Half-Life name. When visiting this updated URL, the user was taken to a page where it asked them for a username and a password. So, the hunt for this information began. Once again, the community analysed everything they could on the whiteboard. They decoded, encoded and asked Merck for more information. Some were mad at them for missing out a chunk of the whiteboard on the photo, and others just wanted to know about Merck's playtest of the game, ignoring the fact that most of the users here were trying to solve a puzzle. Lanthanite appeared to lead the charge in solving the mystery of the login details, where they even asked Merck for another photo that they had mentioned taking previously of the whiteboard, but had deleted. Lanthanite believed that although deleted, it could quite simply be sitting in Merck's recycle bin and could provide additional details of the missing part of the whiteboard. Unfortunately, Merck did check their recycle bin, but it was gone. At this point, two things were clear. Merck was not completely in the loop of this ARG, and secondly, the community had hit a wall. Some members suggested using a password cracker, others asked Merck to restore their computer to a time where they had not deleted the other photo of the whiteboard, and others still ignored the ARG and asked them questions about their playtest of the game. On the 336th comment of this thread, the user Neon noticed a HTML error on the page and managed to bypass the login screen using an exploit in the Firefox browser, which allowed them to load the page behind the login screen. On this screen, they were met with an image of the G-Man with the message, Hello Half-Life2.net, your cleverness is noted, you've passed the first test. Now, a few points to mention about this message. The first is that it appears to speak directly to the Half-Life2.net forum, 
which means that this test was created specifically for the community on this website. And second, this was the first test, another was to come. Not only did the Half-Life community technically pass the first test, but Neon also discovered that if they viewed the HTML source code of this page, two images could be found. One of Dr. Gordon Freeman and the second of a Robin. This is, I guess, their reward for searching for more and Valve knew their fanbase would love this. So what actually happened here? The community had managed to complete the test, just not in the way Valve had intended them to. Which begs the question, was this test solvable with the information at hand? In short, no. Although complete, many still wanted to solve the username and password. It was a puzzle and I understand the compulsion to do so. So, many of the forum users emailed the developers at Valve to find out how to solve the puzzle, and user Neon was lucky enough to receive a response from Eric Johnson. Neon went on to explain to the community that there was no possible way to figure out the username and password as it had been cut off in the photo. They then posted the actual username and password on their personal blog with a link to it in their Half-Life2.net profile. It turned out that Lanthanide's suspicions were correct and Merck's original photo had cut off the username and password by mistake. We can see this here as the username was Valve and the password was 437N452. Looking at the whiteboard, just below the website URL, we can see the final three numbers of the password, 452. This task was impossible to complete, but Valve were great enough to offer the details so that those who continued to study every aspect of the whiteboard for clues could finally find relief from this impossible task. This was the end of the first test, and the fanbase had come together to solve it in less than a day. I must add that even though this test was complete, there were still some that searched for more answers and theorised that there was more to the test, but this was it for now. On August 27th, 2004, Valve allowed its users to preload Half-Life 2. After fans flocked to Steam to download it, the community got to work on looking through the files for any details about the game, and one community member, Calhoun, found something. After extracting the models folder, Calhoun discovered the string Materials Models Gman, where they found a JPEG file titled gman.jpg, surrounded by unopenable VMT and VMF files. Upon opening this, they were greeted with an image of the Gman. Looking back at this now, we know this is a screenshot from the opening of Half-Life 2, but back then, it was new. The next day on August 28th, Calhoun posted a new thread on Half-Life2.net with the title of The Second Test. The second test is here and this time it's an image file. I got the file from the base source shared materials file and in the file it even lists a password, but due to my limited decoding capabilities, I cannot find a link. The small issue here was that Calhoun had missed out parts of the story of their discovery, which caused some confusion. They had found an image file and a password, but not explained what the password was or how they had even discovered it properly. The community was hyped for a potential follow-up to the whiteboard test, but they just needed more information from Calhoun. Following a discussion, Calhoun explained that they had opened up the Gman image in Notepad and had found this text buried inside. Password is Nova Prospect. This is the second test. With this additional information, the Half-Life community knew for sure this was the second test and were now on the same page as Calhoun. They just needed to find out where to put the password. Everyone had their own theories on how to crack this test, some focused on a section in the notepad file that mentioned Photoshop, and following this line of thinking, community members converted the Gman image into various other file types in the hope that more information would be revealed through them. Others attempted to use the password on the screen from the first test, and there were some that believed that the whiteboard from the first test still held some answers. 
As the days passed, they searched, but to no avail. They were not going to find what they were looking for in this image. This was just a piece of the puzzle. Three days later, on August 31st, the user GATS666 discovered something on the media section of the official Half-Life 2 website. They found that when looking through the screenshots of the upcoming game, something odd happened when they hovered over the sixth image of the Citadel. It changed to a lambda sign with the G-man's face behind it. So, they did what anyone would do. They clicked on it and were taken to a page that asked for a username and a password. Using Calhoun's initial discovery from three days before, they entered Nova as the username and Prospect as the password, and success, they were granted access to the next page. But GAT666 was confused with what to do next. So, they went to the Half-Life2.net forum and asked for help. In the post titled, I found something, second test solved, they explained their process and asked the community for help. Then it takes you to this black page that has a white bar to type something. I stuck here. Maybe this has been posted, but I think it's new. Fairly quickly, the user Hazar looked at the source code for the black page and found art of Alex Vance, the bird image that had been shown at the end of test one and the end of a URL. Secret slash second test slash what's my name dot JPEG. Following this, the user manifresh027 simply entered half life2.com at the beginning of this URL, just like the users had done in the first test. With a new URL to explore, it led the community to a page with an image of a barnacle. Considering this web page was called What's My Name, Manny Fresh went back to the black page and entered the word barnacle in the white field. As the Half-Life2.net community followed Manny's lead, they were rewarded with a high quality piece of artwork of a barnacle attacking Gordon Freeman in the canals of City 17. This was the end of Test 2 and this reward split the community that had been attempting to solve it. Many were impressed with the artwork and felt that the hard work had been worth it, while others were let down that the reward was merely a picture. They wanted more. This iconic image of Gordon had been shown previously in a PC gamer magazine, which had later been scanned and uploaded to the internet by fans. But this reward was a high quality version of the image, and those happy with the prize really appreciated that they could own it for themselves. Although the test had concluded, it did not stop speculation where the thread continued to post as some believed Test 2 was still not over, noting that when Test 1 concluded, they were told, you've passed the first test. But confirmation was not given of the completion of the second test. Regardless, on September 3rd, the thread was closed and Test 2 officially ended. And with it, so did the ARG. Something that appears to have been overlooked is that the first image of Gordon in the source code was one of the box arts for Half-Life 2, and the second image of Alex was another. Regardless of whether the community was disappointed with the result or just happy to have participated in the event, this ARG showed that Valve cared about its community with the effort it went to. It brought even more hype to a game that was highly anticipated and brought the community together to solve a mystery. Although not directly connected to the ARG, I do want to mention that the developers of Half-Life 2 were posting updates throughout this period. From June 18th to August 5th, they posted concept art, which this one does look super similar to the Citadel art we have from Half-Life Alex a model render of a strider, and most importantly, on August 5th, Greg Kuma posted three screenshots in-game of Half-Life 2. Now, these look fantastic now, but just imagine how much hype this caused back then. Anyway, in the source code of this page, Kuma had placed art of the G-Man and the bird that had popped up through the ARG. Could this have in some way been the third test? Who knows? Throughout this period, Valve had gifted the fans with a game and content from Half-Life 2. On this forum, we can see the disappointment of the final reward. 
but Valve did give quite a bit to the community throughout, just not the reward. After test 2 concluded, fans waited for a third test to commence, but it never came. There could have been plans, but I guess we'll never know. I am gutted that I did not get to participate in this back when it came out. I would have been around 10 at the time and hadn't discovered Half-Life at that point. I've done my best to piece this information together in a chronological way, but as this was 18 years ago, a bunch of the websites went down that even the Wayback Machine can't access. It is still not clear on whether Merck was aware of the ARG in the beginning, but after looking through the forum posts of their original thread where they asked for suggestions on how to visit Valve, I can see that a load of people commented and suggested they take as many pictures as they could when they were there. So, I believe that Valve noticed this, prepared the whiteboard, and maybe encouraged Merck or the other people on the tour to take a picture of it to kickstart the ARG. It appears that Merck was also just a regular fan that was lucky enough to visit Valve. Although their profile is deleted now, they posted quite consistently on the Half-Life2.net forums about various other games. So, it appears that they were simply guided by Valve to take a photo of the whiteboard and share it to the community. In a way, parallel to how the G-Man uses Gordon throughout the games. In my mind, it adds to the theory that the G-Man is Valve. Another thing I wanted to note is that throughout the video, I have used the Valve Time website, and I just want to reiterate that this was Half-Life2.net up until 2012, where it was renamed. I did mention it at the beginning of the video, but I thought I'd just mention it again to clear up any confusion. This is a little different to my regular content, but I found it super interesting. I do have plans to cover the other ARGs in the Half-Life and Portal universe, so stick around for more content like this alongside my regular lore videos. I have always found ARGs interesting, and I wanted to tell this story in an easy to understand way with enough backstory to do that. Now, if you enjoyed this journey, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts to boost the algorithm, it would help a lot. I would also like to thank my patrons and channel members who are on the screen right now, and an extra special thank you to my gold tier patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, and Mr. M791. What did you think of this ARG? Did you participate in it? And did I mention you in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Now Overwatch, enjoy your day. Bye.